How's everybody doing? Welcome to Center Church. I'm Ryan. I used to play here a little bit. So we'll open up with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us all here today. Open our hearts for uh, some worship and and uh, your word and your message, and let us take it into our week. In your name, amen. Mount up with the waxing wing. High to reach the sun, and I am no further than than when I first begun. So I build a mount to wrap those to shape in your form against the sky with my home in your hands to show all the people why. I'm going to show all the people why Everything I do It's not enough for you yeah, Everything I do It's not enough It's not enough for you In the garden of my pride Lemons in lime tree. I'm too stupid to cry for rain. Fruitless and choked out by weeds. So I write a book of life using the best words I can find for some struggler to snuggle up when the world becomes unkind. Yeah, the world becomes unkind. Everything I do, it's not in love for you. Yeah, everything I do, it's not in love, it's not in love for you. And I find direction eastbound clouds and long for what they might have. But when I step into its midst, this substance I cannot grasp. So I paint a portrait of you as if you had human disguise with oil and canvas to be clay. Open up their eyes like you opened up my eyes. Cause everything I do, it's not in love for you. Yeah, everything I do, it's not in love. Um, it's not in love for you. Everything I do, everything I do, it's not in love for you. Everything I do, it's not in love, it's not in love for you. Take a moment and say hi to your fellow neighbor. Meet and greet each other.
saw you was here, I guess I was here two weeks ago. Ooh, I hope he sings. You didn't sing last week, did you? I missed. Okay. Yeah, it has. Oh, yeah. But good to have you back. Whipping may be for money won't prosper when the darkness falls and won't breathe in. Cause the God I serve knows only how to try you. My God will never fail. Yeah, my God will never fail. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. Power in the mighty name of Jesus. Every war he wages, he will win. Oh, I'm not backing down from any giant. Cause I know how this story ends. Yes, I know how this story I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Oh. Take a second and do for some tithes and some offerings. All right. All right. This time we're going to give back to God his tithes and our offering. Uh, will you pray with me? Father God, thank you so much again for another day. Thank you for allowing us to come here and worship you and uh, hear what you have to say through your word. And uh, Lord, uh, we thank you for your grace for your faithfulness, for your love, and for your mercy. And we just ask that you will bless this, uh, this offering that you're about to receive. We ask that it will bring you glory and that it will, uh, it will help to further your kingdom, Lord. And we love you and we ask this all in Jesus' precious name. Amen.
take with the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good Take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. And I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Taking what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, but you turn it for good. You turn it for good. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. Wow. I'm here. Thank you. You're fine. You're fine. Good morning to each of you. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Timothy chapter 3. I was going to move on uh, this week to, to the, our series. Of, we began in, in Mark a couple of months ago, and but I... I, I I don't know why the Lord just gave them, me this passage this week. And I began to study it and I said, Well, I need to preach about this. So uh, I just feel led to, to do this. Where that computer sits, it is so warm on this podium and my hands are so cold from out in the parking lot. This is absolutely like laying down in a hot bath. It's good. First Timothy chapter 3, two verses I want to share with you. Or First Timothy chapter... First, well, you've got to get in 1 Timothy first, and I'm in golly, but 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. Although I hope to come to you soon, I'm writing you these instructions. He, he was, Paul was in Macedonia. He's writing to, to Timothy, who's over in Ephesus. Although I hope to come to you soon, I'm writing to you these instructions so that if I am delayed... You will know how people ought to conduct themselves in God's household, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and foundation of the truth. This is the word of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you, Father, for uh, the opportunity to gather in, in the place such as this that is warm, that's safe, that we can gather with friends, family, 
I thank you, God, for new acquaintances and those old friends. Lord, may you ignite a fire in our hearts today and that we might treasure one another all the more. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. I don't think I've ever heard a preacher preach about the conduct in the family of God. Don't think I've ever seen it. We are the family. We're the people of God. Uh, when I was a kid, we had a, one of those Dotsons. You remember the Dotsons? They were before they changed their name to Nissan. We had one of them. They opened up a dealership. And our family went and bought one. Man, and running this little old car, one little blue one, pretty little old, and it was little. It was little. Seat of that thing, and we'd come up the road, and you know how boys would do. We'd start rapping. We'd get that old car to rocking, going in them old curves on them old mountain roads. I'm telling you, what's the truth? Mama would say, quit it. Mama would say, sometimes Mama would say, don't be acting up. You remember that? Don't you act up. That's a ba- You knew what that meant, didn't you? Well, Mama had got on to us, telling us to behave, kept saying behave, behave, behave. Well, in the, con- in, in the whole process of driving up the road and wrestling and fighting, my cousin had switched seats. And so Mama reached around and she just reached the first young and she got a hold of, she just pinched a plug out of his leg. My cousin, oh, hey, Judy, I'm Michael. Mitchell. And she said, well, you ought to behave too. And just kept on driving. Well, we straightened up because I knew Mama would find me eventually and pinch me. Don't act up. We don't usually pinch people who behave in life of the church. And you know, the funny thing, a lot of times I don't think we understand and realize that we're misbehaving in the family of God. I want to give you a couple quick things this morning just, just for you to think about as we wrap up this whole 40 days of community is who we really are. We need to remember who we are, who we belong to, and he lays that out in verse, uh, verse uh, 15. If I'm delayed coming to you, he says, how we ought to conduct ourselves in God's household what are we we are the household of faith isn't that a neat thing to think about we are the household of faith we belong to the lord Uh, this is deeper than being part of the family this is being different than being part of the wilson household this is different than being part of the everhart household this is about being part of the household of god and even deeper what else does he say about us? We are the church of the living God. We are the church of the living God. We're the, we're the bride of Christ, friends. That's who we are. And with that comes great responsibility in how we relate to one another. This isn't how we conduct ourselves over at the schoolhouse. This is not about over at your factory or in your office place or in your business. This is how as we are as the church, and this, that's a higher standard, how we are as the church. Why? Because we are the pillar and foundation of the truth. We're the pillar and foundation of the truth. Uh, uh, in Ephesus, there was a huge temple to uh, Diana. And it had like a hundred and, I think it's 17 that supported that great structure. Each of them had been given by some king. Here's all those great pillars that supported. That's what a pillar, a pillar does. It supports, doesn't it? Out front, there's some two pillars on the, the front of our building. They support that port. What are we supporting? We're supporting truth. The most important thing in conduct in the life of the church is that we uphold the truth. The truth. 
because in the latter days, as he says in the next verse, uh, there's going to be deception. Chapter 4, look what he says. The Spirit Spirit clearly says that in latter times some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. When you begin to learn, in chapter 1, Timothy writes about He says, verse 3, I urge you when I was in Macedonia to stay. Any longer. It was a real issue. False teaching was coming into the life of the church. And Paul was saying, We can't do this. We've got to walk in different fashion. And so that you won't hear any false teaching, we're going to switch gears. Hang on just a second. telling you Paul didn't have to deal with stuff like this. False teaching. False teachings. A spirit of deception. The Bible says in the last days there'll be false teachers and there'll be deceptive spirits in our day. Folks, there's all kind of deception in our time. All kind of false teaching. Now, I uh, I'm sorry if this gets in your berry patch, okay? I just hate it. It's going to make me not sleep tonight. I had, I actually had six children. We lost one. But that little guy was just a little fella, and I knew he was a boy. I had a little girl. The doctor didn't have to tell me that I had a little girl. She was a little girl. Folks, we're destroying our young people today. We're destroying them. We're destroying what it means to be a man, what it means to be a woman in our culture. This is of Satan. It's of Satan. We, we, we are forgetting to teach the value in who you are as a boy or a little girl. How precious that is. And the schools are supporting it. The medical community are, are harboring this lie. And you know why they're doing it? Money. Follow the money trail and you'll know where it's coming from. It's destroying our culture. And if you're here today and you're struggling with your, your, uh, your, uh, well, I'm trying to think of the word. It's sexuality. Young person today, you are precious in the sight of God and how He made you. You're unique. You're unique like you are. And God's going to bless you and help you and take care of you. We all have our struggles in life. Do not listen to false teaching. Now, folks, I believe in this. And I, I, again, I, it may get in your berry patch. I, I can't live my life by what CNN says. I just know what God's Word says. We have teachers who are teaching in the United Methodist Church that they don't believe in the divinity of Christ, that they don't believe that God came in human form to this world in a person named Jesus. There, there's other teachers and preachers and Sunday school teachers that don't believe in, uh, they believe in universality, uh, universalism. That is that everybody's going to be saved. You don't have to make any decision whatsoever. Everybody's going to be saved. God loves everybody equally. Everybody's going to be saved. That's not what the gospel teaches. 
We have to come by faith to Jesus Christ. That's what the Scripture teaches. That's not what I say. The Bible teaches that there's salvation in no other name but the name of Jesus. That's what the Scripture says. If there was any other way for you to come to go to heaven, friends, why would Jesus have gone to the cross? It makes no sense if there was another way. If you could have made yourself good enough, why would he have gone to the cross? It's a false teaching that teaches you anything else. There are those that teach that the resurrection never happened. That's a false teaching. And we hold at Center Church these great truths that I just, every single one of them I just laid out to you. And frankly, that's what we believed as a church forever. And somebody along the way has decided to water all that down. We may stand alone with, with just a handful of brothers and sisters around the world, but we're on the right side of that because it's God's Word. Uh, I pulled up at Lake Junaluska this past week, and they, they were quoting from Isaiah, and I, I'm going to mess it up. But it talks about the Word of God uh, standing forever and the flower fading. But, the, my, but my word will stand forever. And I thought, wow, on that great billboard is such a profession of faith, yet our church doesn't believe in His Word. If we don't believe in His Word, what else are we going to stand on? We are the church that holds up the truth. We are the pillar of truth. And we hold that up for Him. It's not our individual church. It's the church of the living God that holds that pillar up of truth and we believe in that so how do we conduct ourselves by telling the truth by telling the truth and then he talks about other ways about how to conduct ourselves and so right quick I'm going to go through some of that right quick he talks about the dealing with the false teachers and how you need to to deal with that we know at Ephesus when he was at Ephesus Paul had had uh, instructed the people, he said, look, he said, when I'm gone, there's, the, there's going to be false teachers that's going to arise in, in, in your midst and they're going to be like ravenous wolves. So he said, you need to deal with them. But we're also to be a worshiping community. You know, what sets us apart from, there's some great organizations, and I could ask in this place, and you could raise your hands, how many have been part of some of these great civic organizations. I think about, uh, groups that, that have been in my churches through the years and people I know, it's, we're Lions. I think about the Lions Club, what a great thing they do for folks. I think about uh, the Civitan Club. I think about them and what a difference they've made for, in young people's lives. And, and so I think about um, scouting and what a great thing it's done throughout the years and so forth and American Heritage Girls and all those great things. And there's a lot of other ones out there, okay? The Optimus Club. There used to be a lot of them around. Even JC's. A lot of the great, great organizations. But you know what sets us apart as a church? We're a worshiping and praying community. We're a worshiping and praying community. The other ones don't worship and pray. We're a worshiping, praying community. Chapter 2 of 1 Timothy says, I urge you then, First of all, that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those that are in authority. We're to be worshiping and praying for one another. Look for opportunities to pray for folks. I know some of us are bashful. I understand that, but I'm going to tell you, there is nothing more powerful than when you see a human need and you get somebody off to the side and you say to them, whisper to them and say, Hey, can I pray for you? I'll tell you what, I've, I've done that a lot of times. I've never one time, uh, when, I, when I felt that need, I did have one nut do that one time in the hospital, and I'll tell that another time, but no other time in all the years that I've said, hey, can I pray for you? People don't just smile and say, yes. And you just quietly have a quick prayer with them and go on. There's power in that, folks. You're holding up the pillar of truth that you're saying to them, God can make a difference in your old life. God can make a difference. 
There's a lot of folks shipwrecked. Paul talked about those that were shipwrecked in the faith. Folks, there are a lot of folks shipwrecked by life today. And you and I can come along and make a difference for them. Then, then I'd say to you, he says, he, he gives instructions about how uh, we're to conduct ourselves as, as, as individual people. He talks about how uh, women are, are to dress and adorn themselves. He talks about that. He talks about uh, how it's not the outward appearance that matters, it's the inner appearance, and that applies to us men as well today. It's that inner appearance that matters. Uh, ladies, you can have the finest dress on, you can have the Mary Kay face on all you want to, and you can go get your hair style as good as it can be. Fellas, you can be wearing the finest clothes that's ever been, but I'm going to tell you, if you don't have a heart for the Lord, you're just an ugly old soul dressed up. You, you, I, you know what, y'all? You've got lipstick on a pig. It's still a pig. And that's the way it is. That's the way it is. He talks about what really matters is the heart. That's what really matters. And he goes on and talks about how the leaders ought to be people of great character, people of integrity that walk in the ways of the Lord. Uh, not, because you, you, not because you was a leader in some other business that you get thrown on the finance committee. Not because you some, got some kind of money, we're going to get you in here and get you as a leader. No, that's a bunch of junk. He talks about people with integrity. God, if you are a Christian, you walk in the ways of God, God will give you the wisdom to lead. That's the kind of people we need in life. The church to lead. Not just because you got a fat bank account. I'll tell you what I found. My experience is they got a fat bank account and they're going to keep it. So that's just all I'm going to say about that. Uh, folks, character matters to God. We've got on the side, used to be on the, on the, on the, the, uh, back of the trailer, the sides of the trailer, the scouts, they had the old slogan back in the day of scouting said, uh, or, or one of the trademarks, it said, character counts. Character still counts to God today. It still counts. It counts on the ball field. It counts in the schoolhouse or in the courthouse. It still, it still counts. And then he said that they shouldn't, leaders shouldn't be young converts. That's interesting, isn't it? There ought to be people who walk in the faith a little while before they, they start leading the church. You, you can't be a leader till you've learned how to serve. And that's hard to do. Because some people would rather be the whistle and make all the racket instead of really serving. God's called us to be his servants. And then after you learn, then you can, you can do the other. Then he talks about, con he talks about how we're to take care of people. I think it's interesting that in chapter 5, when he lays out about, uh, uh, he, ta he talks about how we're to take care of the elderly. He talks about the widows, how we need to take care of them. And he doesn't just talk about any, first, look at chapter 5, verse 1. Do not rebuke an older man harshly, but exhort him, as if he were your father. Man, that'd change the way we'd talk to an older person, wouldn't it? And then he says, treat younger men as brothers, treat women as mothers, and younger women as sisters with absolute purity. That's about honoring those that's gone before you, folks. That's important for us to do and how we talk to them. We live in a youthful age today. And it's like that there's a certain point that we just shove the old people aside. There is a lot to be taught by them. But Titus, when Paul wrote Titus, he even lifts out that the older men and women are supposed to be teaching the younger men and women. What in the world ever happened to that? Where did that ever happen? Hey, listen to me. You can have your Methodist men and your Methodist women all day long. But if you older women aren't teaching the younger ones, and you young ones aren't listening, you ain't got nothing but a name. People need to be taught how to walk in the ways of the Lord. And that, it takes older people to tell you that, and teach you that. 
They may not be so much older than you, but have walked with the Lord longer. Listen to them. They've got something to tell you. They've got a story. They've been on a journey longer than you have. And I know some of you young people in here, it's going to take a while for you to come on. You ain't so smart. I mean, you ain't. I'm sorry. You, you're just not. You don't know everything. But you're going to get up in the 20s and you're going to find out that you've got some stuff to learn. But hang on just a minute. Paul also said to Timothy, he said, Timothy, don't let anybody be ashamed of your years. That's important for us older folks to remember too. See, God's got using, doing some stuff in them young people's lives too. He had a call on a fellow named Timothy, God did. And God was saying through Paul, Hey Timothy, you remember that call. You remember flame, fanning the flame, that, the laying on of hands that was put on you when you were ordained by, by me. You remember that. You young people remember you have something to give to the family of God too. Don't you forget that. And don't you be ashamed of your years. Don't you be ashamed of it. Even though this preacher said you don't know everything, and you don't, just know, don't be ashamed of your years. I asked I ask Scotty today, uh, I said, Scotty, come on, we're gonna, we'll sing out in the parking lot today. And uh, Scotty, bless his heart, he said, no, 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 we're not going to do that. I said, are you ashamed of your youth? No, no, I ain't ashamed of my youth. I said, oh, you just, you just know it just won't. What was it I said? I said something crazy. I said, you just know it, 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 you can't sing or something like that. that. That's not being ashamed. It's just the way it is. Folks, know your skills. He knows the skill level. Paul also said, remember your gifts. Conduct in the family of God. Remember your gifts. And celebrate those gifts and share them with other people. And I'd, I'd go back to this other thing about the older people too. Don't think you know everything because you don't know everything either. Having, having white hair is not a sign of being smart. We're all still learning. All still growing. All trying to be what we are as the family of God. We're to lift up and encourage one another in the body of Christ. All on the same journey. Every single one of us. We gather in this place at different places. Some have walked with the Lord for years and years. Some have had some great tumbles. And if we named their name today, they would leave out in shame. But they inner side their heart, they're smiling because they know from where they've fallen. I know how God's lifted them up. Others have just heard about him and really heard about him for the first time. Oh, they may have been in church all their life, but now they're finally hearing and they're on that journey with him. We're all part of that family of God, all expressing ourselves in different ways, but all still seeking him because we're his people holding up his truth. I want to encourage you, as you go forward as, as the people of God here at Center Church, to above all, love you one another. Paul said, that's how the world would, or that's how Dr. Luke said, the world would know we're Christians by our love. Do you love one another and have that deep affection for one another? Enough that you got time to sit and listen to a younger person. Got time to listen to an older person. Got time to share what you know with somebody else. There's a young parent in this place that certainly could use your encouragement and allow them to know that, hey, I've been there with you. I know exactly what, where you're going from. Because they need to know that they're not alone. That's what we are as a church. We're people bond together in the bonds of love. 
that reminds us that we're not alone, but the living God walks through us. May God help us to express that truth to one another and grow with Him, and grow with Him in love. This world's needing that so much. Let's pray together. Father, we thank You for reaching out and loving us and helping us. We thank you, Lord. I know I, as I'm having this prayer this morning, I'm thankful for folks that, that were some of them were my own age that taught me an awful lot about you. I think about a young fellow showed up at my house, it was a co-worker, because he was concerned about my soul. Lord, I thank you for that. And I thank you, Lord, for those little white-headed ladies in our little old Mill Hill Church that tried to love on me and teach me. God, thank you for the godly men that walked before me. Now, Lord, may we walk before others and be a pillar of truth to them. We might hold up their life. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I just touched on something just a minute ago. It's about encouraging one another. Uh, we, we did a pounding for, uh, not a pounding, we did, uh, we got some gift baskets together. Dana headed that up for us. Our, our small group actually thought about that the Weevil, over at the Weevil's house. And one of the things we want to do for Josh, he's not here today, is we want to do an old-fashioned pounding for them, okay? You know what a pounding is? How many of you know what a pounding is? Wow, there's about four of you. What we're going to do is, he gets in here next week, we're just going to all bring our boxing gloves and just pound the fool out of him. <laughs> That's not what a pounding is. That's not. <laughs> Although, I think it'd be fun. But, uh, no, I mean, I don't think that'd be fun. Well, it'd be all right if you was a bit the pounder, wouldn't it? It'd, but, uh, it, Josh, if what we're going to do, we're going to bring dry goods for him. You might want to bring a, a, a ham for the boy. Uh, bring some sugar, bring some flour, bring some beans, whatever you want to bring to show your love for him. And we're going to fill up some wheelbarrows next week for him to take back just so he knows that we love him here at Center Church, okay? So you just think about something. You might bring a gift card for him. In fact, if you'd rather do that, that's fine. If you want to give him some uh, Andrew Jack, isn't it Andrew Jackson that's on the $20 bill? Is that right? Ben Franklin? That'd be all right too, I guess, wouldn't it? I tell you what, if you're bashful about giving that to him, give me the Ben Franklins. I'll take care of it. <laughs> but, but just tell him, send him a little note, and then we're going to put them in a wheelbarrow. Scotty's going to bring a wheelbarrow, and we're going to have it right here, and we're going to load it up Sunday morning. And I'm going to bring one from the house too, because we're going to bring enough to put in two wheelbarrows. So how's that? So that's what we're going to do to show our love for you. All right. Hey, thank you so much for coming this morning. God bless you. I've, I've got a meeting over uh, at uh, Arcadia today about this church separation stuff, and, and I, I appreciate you pray for that. And next Sunday we've got a meeting with the DS. They're going to vote to leave. And so we're hoping that goes all right for them. So pray about that. There's another church I've been talking to, Fireview. They're, they're, they, they are having their vote next Sunday afternoon as well. So let's pray for them, okay? God bless you all. Thank you for coming today. Would you stand as we're going to end our service? We're blessed to have Mitch as a pastor. And I just uh, thought that was a powerful message about truth. It's simple. All you got to do is just tell the truth. And that's a big deal. There I was empty handed Crying out from the pit of my despair 
there you were in the shadow holding out my hand you met me there and now where would I be without you where would I be Jesus you were the voice in the desert calling me out in the dead of night fighting my battles for me you were my rescue story you lifted me up from the ashes carrying my soul from death to life bringing me from glory to glory you were my rescue story you are you are you are my rescue story Pages before I had a name, before I needed grace. Singing songs of redemption every time I ran away, you were longer than my shame. And now, where would I be without you? Where would I be, Jesus? You were the voice in the desert, calling me out in the dead of night, fighting my battles for me. You were my rescue story, lifting me up from the ashes, carrying my soul from death to light, bringing me from glory to glory. You were my rescue story. You are, you are. You were my rescue story. You are, you are. You are, you are. You were my rescue story. You are, you are. You were the voice in the desert, calling me out in the dead of night, fighting my battles for me. You were my rescue story. You lifted me up from the ashes. You carried my soul from death to light, bringing me from glory to glory. You were my rescue story. Yes, you are, you are, you are my rescue story. You are, you are, you are my rescue story. Amen. Do a last prayer, and you guys have a great week. Give Ryan a big hand for helping us out this week. Thank y'all for coming. I offer this benediction. We are charged by Christ to go out and change the world and not let the world change us. The example we have and we lead with that comes out of this building is what the world needs. So go this week to be a beacon for Christ. Thank you for coming. <laughs>